The proposed reductions in carbon dioxide emissions announced in China are at the low end of what scientists say will be necessary to save the planet, but have been welcomed as a good start. If the announcement yesterday is the end of the day, both for the US and China and more broadly, it's not sufficient to make the sort of deep reductions globally that are needed. But even this was too much for the Republican leadership in Washington, D.C. I was particularly distressed by the deal apparently he's reached with the Chinese on his current trip, which as I read the, uh, the agreement, requires the Chinese to do nothing at all for 16 years uh, while these uh, carbon emission regulations are creating havoc in my state and other states around the country. President Obama's pledge to reduce the U.S.'s carbon emissions by 26 to 28 percent from 2005 levels by 2025 was just that, a pledge. So there's nothing for Congress to ratify. And the administration is in power to slash power station emissions and regulate fuel efficiency. The Environmental Protection Agency is considering tougher power plant standards. But scientists say far more action will be needed to prevent catastrophic climate change. Uh, whether we can meet the targets that were just set by President Obama and China in the United States depends on how strict the EPA is willing to make their greenhouse gas regulations for power plants. And it also depends on whether Congress is able to, in the next few years, pass some sort of climate legislation to put a price on carbon emissions. But not only has the incoming Congress pledged to protect the U.S. coal industry and expand greenhouse gas intensive fracking for natural gas, this is the man who will soon lead the committee that oversees environmental policy. Over the past decade, I've been leading the charge in Washington to make sure the global warming hoax is exposed. Inhofe has pledged to rein in the Environmental Protection Agency, though it's far from clear whether the Republicans could overcome a Democratic filibuster or presidential veto to do so. In addition, the economics of renewable energy may blunt the influence of those resisting change. A recent report by Deutsche Bank concluded that solar power will be cheaper than electricity from the national grid in most U.S. states in just two years' time. Nonetheless, until climate change resonates at the ballot box with those making policy in Washington, the chances of meaningful political action to save the planet seem slim. Shihab Al Jazeera, Washington.